I'm going to run VS Code inside of virtual reality. So let's just jump straight into it. Let's find out what the boundless possibilities are when we do this. VS Code running in virtual reality sounds absolutely insane, but that's what I wanted to try in today's video. We've got the brand new HP Reverb 2 here. This thing is fresh off the market. We're going to set it up and then we're going to install VS Code and test out how it feels like making a website in VR. I've got my trusty USB-C cable here. Let's open up this package right now. This is a package that I've been waiting for for the last number of months when I pre-ordered it back in September. And I've been looking at different ways we can do coding and development to make it more fun. I did a video on using VS Code on the mobile phone, but the only way we can make this even more interesting is by trying to do some coding in virtual reality. This is why I'm personally so excited and why I'm looking forward to really testing out this headset and its limits in terms of making websites and applications. Ooh, that looks really nice. And I've got my two controllers over here. Let's take a quick look around. Very nice. It looks like I'm in some sort of virtual space here near the city. We've got a few things already here. A couple of games from the uh, Windows Store here, but that's not really what I want to do. I've got a bit of a 3D library here on the walls, and let's jump inside of our house and take a look at what we have. Ah, here we go. This is my little workspace, so let's jump in here. And this is where I'll start building some applications. Maybe we'll do a React application with a little Chrome window up here, my virtual desktop here, and there's a calendar up there which I can move around. I can actually move all these elements around, so that's really cool. With this desktop, I can make it maybe smaller, or I can make it bigger, and I can move it further back, or I can bring it up nice and close as well. So that's really cool. Okay, so the first thing that I've noticed is that I can actually move my windows around straight from just using my mouse. I don't even need the actual handheld uh, thingamajigs here. I guess what we can do now is actually open up VS Code in here and have a look at how it operates. What I'm going to do is I'm going to open up VS Code on my desktop here. So this is like I would normally run it. And on here, I've got a regular window, which I can move around and we'll have maybe a version of React running in there. Let's open up console and do npm start. And this will start our React application. Here you can see that it's starting up. Then over here, I'm just going to move the mouse and I'm going to open this up as well in our browser here. So localhost 3000. And here we've got our React application with virtual reality live coding enabled. So I'm going to scroll down here and maybe save that this is what touch typing is probably pretty important with this. This is really cool. So I'll hit save on that. We can see hot reloading has automatically updated that. And this feels like I've got a huge desktop. The next thing I'll be able to do here is maybe open up a new tab. And I wonder if I can pull that out. I can. So I can pull this tab out and just have it over here. And let's maybe put this one here on the left side and open up, say, Google, and say I'm having an issue. Maybe I need to go Google, and then I'm gonna go Stack, Stack Overflow, React Start, and see what, ha what happens here. So here I'm searching for some Google issues that I'm having with maybe React. Here I've got my application, my code, here I've got my actual code, and let's see if we can build out a website now, just doing this alone. So right now I can see all the code very clearly. All the text here is nice and clean. Um, I could probably even move forward a little bit. And This feels like I'm almost inside of a theater and I can see everything nice and clear. I really like this. So far, I'm very impressed. Of course, sometimes you might not have to use the mouse and keyboard. You might be able to just use the controllers. The problem is that when you are using the controllers, you sort of need to use them to move about. Because right now, if I'm using the mouse, it's a little bit harder to move around. But when in, I'm in the controller menu, that's much easier. Also, if... Ooh, I didn't want to do that. If I'm in Chrome, for example, here, and if I type here, a nice big keyboard pops up that I can use. So for this one here, I might click up here and go localhost, and I can immediately click on to our React application. But the problem is that if I jump back here, I don't have that keyboard, which is unfortunate. But this is really cool that I can sort of laser in on what I'm trying to select. I can scroll with this. 
and uh, otherwise I'm more of a mouse and keyboard kind of person. So I think that's what I'm going to use for most of this stuff. Here are my thoughts so far. If you're building out an application, um, you will have a lot of really cool features here if you're using virtual reality. Basically, so far, I've been really impressed with just some of the functionality that you can do in here. I can move this window anywhere I want. I can create additional windows, which I can put up here, and I create a whole working space that I can utilize. All of this has passed through keyboard, so if I want Stack Overflow up here, if I want another website um, somewhere over here, I can have all these websites I can even make this window nice and tiny and move it maybe closer to myself. Uh, let's have a look if I can move it. This one here. So it's sort of just sitting here right below me so I can access if I need. Or I can bring it in really close as just some information that I might need. So for example, if I quickly wanted to go on to Dribble, which is a really cool website for having a look at some designs. So I'll select onto there, and then maybe we go to browse some of the trending ones. So this one here, I can have a look at this, for example, design, and then just simply start implementing it here. So I could do, say, discover, whoops, uh, what did I do wrong here? Here we go. Uh, discover your destination. And as long as I spell that correctly, h1, discover... Uh, we can do H2, your destination, and destination can also be inside of a span. We could stylize that, sort of similar to what we have here in this design. So this makes it feel like I can do some pretty quick coding, um, and then immediately I could preview this. So if I'm doing some CSS in here, let's actually open up our CSS, which is just over here. Uh, we'll go to app this one over here and let's go and create a h1 element and for this h1 element we can do a font size say 48 pixels see what that looks like it should be a bit bigger then we can do a h2 font size say 24 pixels uh, let's remove the margin that's happening here I think there's a bit of margin happening on both of them actually so we'll remove the margin here and there they're nice and close together and then we can also remove maybe the underline, or I think they're in an A-link. Let's have a look. Yeah, they are in an A-link. So I'm going to get rid of that whole A-link over here. Uh, we'll hit save on that. So there they are. And then back in our CSS over here, uh, which is just there. Uh, for the H2 tag, uh, we could do H2 span. And this one can be color green. So hopefully that should pop up for destination. And finally, we can just capitalize your and destination. So hopefully this gives you an idea of how quickly you can do some coding with, say, some design here, some code here, and a live preview there. But yeah, this could really change how I develop websites. I'm going to have to do this a little bit more. So I might do some live streams of me coding in VR, and I hope you guys want to stay tuned and have a look at that in the future. But so far, I've really enjoyed this experience.